Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Renuka with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi replies to debate on motion of thanks in the Lok Sabha, asserts India is moving forward as fastest developing economy in the world despite COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister assures that small farmers' interests are being taken care of by the government. Both Houses of Parliament adjourned for one hour as mark of respect to Nightingale of India, Lata Mangeshkar. Campaigning reaches climax on its penultimate day for first phase of Assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Samajwadi Party announces another list of 24 candidates for UP Assembly elections. Congress Party also releases names of 28 candidates. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavya launches immunization program Intensified Mission in Rudhanush 4.0. Schools reopen in Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha, Gujarat and Kerala after decline in COVID-19 cases. And Australia announces to reopen country's borders to fully vaccinated tourists from 21st of February. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. Another news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today asserted in the Lok Sabha that India under the NDA rule is moving forward as the fastest developing economy in the world despite the COVID-19 pandemic. He replied to the discussion on the motion of thanks to the President's address this evening. Mr. Modi said India is the biggest emerging economy. He listed out that India is attracting record foreign direct investments. He said India is now among the five topmost countries in generating renewable energy. Mr. Modi said, आज विश्व के आर्थिक जगत के सभी ज्ञाता इस बात को मानते हैं कि भारत ने जिस आर्थिक नीतियों को लेकर इस कोरोना कालखंड में अपने आप को आगे बढ़ाया वो अपने आप में एक उदाहरण ही है अनुभव भी हम करते हैं हमने देखा है भारत आज दुनिया की जो बड़ी इकोनॉमीज है उसमें सबसे तेजी से विकसित हो रही बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था है इस कोरोना कालखंड में भी हमारे किसानों ने रिकॉर्ड पैदावार की Mr. Modi said the small farmers' interests are being taken care of by the government, adding if they are made stronger, the rural economy will also get strengthened. He criticized that those who are away from the country's grassroots cannot understand the pain of the farmers and said they are hurting the sentiments of the small farmers. The Prime Minister said just like the changed world order after World War II, the post-COVID situation has also changed drastically, throwing up various opportunities to India. Corona kaal ke baad, Vishwa ek naye world order ki taraf, naye vyavasthaon ki taraf, bahut tezi se aage bada raha hai. Ek aisa turning point hai ki hum log ek Bharat ke roop mein is avasar ko ghawana nahi chahiye. Main table par, भारत की आवाज भी बुलंद रहनी चाहिए भारत ने एक लीडरशिप रोल के लिए अपने आप को कम नहीं आंकना चाहिए Prime Minister Modi charged the opposition of triggering the migrant laborers in Mumbai to move to their native places though lockdown was enforced to keep them indoors. He said their movement contributed to mass spreading of the pandemic across many states. He also blamed the parties in Delhi for asking those laborers in hotments to go back to their native villages against the lockdown norms. He said yoga has proved to be beneficial to tackle COVID-19 pandemic. However, he said the opposition failed to promote yoga during the pandemic. The Prime Minister said the Make in India initiative has met with resounding success. He said the budget has made provisions for promoting self-reliance in defence manufacturing, adding India is becoming a major exporter of defence products. He said India suffered earlier under the UPA government due to indecision in procurement of defence equipment, leading to inordinate delays. Prime Minister Modi said the Startup India initiative has led India to become the third most successful country in nourishing startups. 
He said during the UPA government there were only about 500 startups, but 7,000 startups have been established in the last seven years. He added many such startups have become unicorns and expressed confidence that very soon such unicorns based in India would cross the figure of a century. He also said many of them are poised to become multinational companies. The Prime Minister discredited all the criticisms against the Make in India initiative, saying MSMEs are being benefited by the government's financial packages. एमएसएमई की परिभाषा में हमने सुधार करके उसको भी नए अवसर दिए हैं अपने छोटे उद्योगों को सुरक्षित करने के लिए एमएसएमई के लिए सरकार ने कोरोना के विकट कालखंड में 3 लाख करोड़ रुपए की विशेष योजना भी शुरू की है और उसका लाभ हमारे एमएसएमई सेक्टर को मिला और इसका बहुत बढ़िया स्टडी एसबीआई ने किया एसबीआई का स्टडी कहता है कि 13.5 लाख एमएसएमई इस योजना के कारण बर्बाद होने से बच गए हैं एसबीआई का स्टडी कहता है 1.5 करोड़ नौकरियां बची हैं और करीब 14% एमएसएमई लोन्स के कारण एनपीए होने की जो संभावना थी उससे बच गए हैं on inflation, Prime Minister Modi said it was in double digits during the second term of the UPA government, which has been brought down by the NDA government. He said food inflation is now under 3%. He said India is witnessing unprecedented growth in infrastructure, including in rural roads, national highways and airports and drones. He called upon the youth to make use of the opportunities that are made available in the fields like space, drones and defence. He said 6 lakh villages are being connected with fiber optic cables. The Lok Sabha was adjourned for an hour today in honor of Bharat Ratna Lata Mangeshkar, who passed away yesterday. As soon as the House met for the day this afternoon, Speaker Om Birla read a statement saying that, besides the country's highest civilian award, Lata Mangeshkar has been a recipient of various coveted awards, including the Dada Sahib Palke Award. He recalled the 50 years of her matchless contribution to the music field. He also made an obituary reference over the death of two former members of the House of the Peoples, Gajanan Babar and C. Jangaredi. After the obituary references, the members rose up and observed silence to pay homage to the departed souls. Later, the Speaker adjourned the House to meet again at 5 p.m. The Rajya Sabha was also adjourned today for one hour till 11.05 a.m. as a mark of respect to legendary singer and former member of the House, Lata Mangeshkar. When the house met this morning, it paid tribute to Lata Mangeshkar by observing silence. The government has sanctioned 26 crore rupees under the Nai Roshni scheme in the last three years through which around 1 lakh women have been trained. Minority Affairs Minister Mukhtar Abbas Makwi in a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today informed this. The minister said, Nai Roshni scheme is a central sector scheme for the women belonging to minority community in the age group of 18 to 65 years. The scheme aims to empower and enhance confidence in women by providing knowledge, tools and techniques for leadership development of women. The government has said that the World Oil Outlook 2021 flagship publication by Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, has projected that the oil demand in India is expected to reach around 11 million barrels per day by 2045 as compared to approximately 4.9 million barrels per day in 2021. In a written reply to a question in the Rajya Sabha today, Minister of State for Petroleum and Natural Gas, Ameshwar Teli, informed this. The minister said the government is taking various steps to provide for the country's energy security, including Tamil Nadu through inter alia, increasing domestic production of oil and gas in all states of India, diversifying import sources to new countries and regions. He added, the government is diversifying energy sources beyond traditional hydrocarbons to emerging fuels like ethanol, compressed biogas and hydrogen, through schemes such as ethanol blending program and sustainable alternative towards affordable transportation. Mr. Dameshwar said the government has been taking up the issue bilaterally with crude oil producing countries with OPEC and with heads of other international fora to convey India's serious concerns over crude oil price volatility and India's strong preference for responsible and reasonable pricing for consumer countries. Minister of Tribal Affairs Arjun Munda introduced the Constitution Scheduled Tribes Order Amendment Bill 2022 in the Lok Sabha today. The amendment bill seeks to add certain communities in the list of scheduled tribes in relation to the state of Tripura. 
When the minister sought to move the bill, Adhiranjan Chaudhary of the Congress asked to include certain other communities also from the whole region, including Kurmis, who he said were listed as tribes in 1931. To this, Mr. Munda said the present amendment bill has been brought before Parliament only after a scientific study on different communities. On the 14th of this month, the single phase polling in the two states of Goa and Uttarakhand will be held simultaneously. 301 candidates are contesting for 40 seats in Goa and 632 candidates are vying for 70 seats in Uttarakhand. Camping is in full swing for the single phase polls in Goa and Uttarakhand. Door-to-door -door canvassing and virtual appeals to the voters also continue. Political activities have also begun in other poll-bound states, including Punjab and Manipur, with the party leaders deliberating in marathon meetings to finalize their electoral strategies and formations. On the 20th of this month, single-phase polling in all the 117 assembly constituencies of Punjab will also take place for which a total of 1,304 candidates are in the fray. In Manipur, many candidates today filed their nomination papers for both first and second phases of assembly elections. The last date of the submission of nomination papers for the first phase is tomorrow, while the last date of submission for the second phase will be the 11th of this month. Voting will be held in 38 assembly constituencies on 27th of this month in the first phase, while second phase voting will be held in 22 assembly constituencies on 3rd of March. Meanwhile, an official team of Election Commission of India, led by Chief Election Commissioner of India Sushil Chandra, arrived at Imphal on a two-day visit to review the poll preparedness in Manipur. A report. With only one day left for the submission of nomination papers for the first phase, many candidates filed their nomination paper till this evening. Meanwhile, a team of Election Commission of India, led by Chief Election Commissioner of India, Sushil Chandra, arrived at Imphal on a two-day visit to the state. The Chief Election Commissioner of India convened a meeting this evening with District Election Officers, Superintendent of Police, State Election Officer and other state officials and review the preparedness of polls in Manipur. J.J. Thoksom, AIR News, Imphal. Ahead of the upcoming assembly elections in Uttarakhand on the 14th of February, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today addressed the people of Dehradun and Haridwar through his virtual Vijay Sankalp Sabha. The Prime Minister called the late CDS General Bipin Rawat the pride of the state and said that he bows down to all those brave hearts who took motivation from the land of Uttarakhand to lay down their lives for the nation. Addressing the gathering, Mr. Modi said in this year's budget, the government has announced Parvat Mala Yojana, which would act as a harbinger of an era of development in the state, and in the near future, the state would witness an uptick in tourism and employment opportunities in the state. Listing the achievements of the double-engine government, Mr. Modi said, करीब साढ़े पांच हजार करोड़ रुपए खर्च किए जा चुके हैं। आप कल्पना कीजिए, ये ब्रेक लगाने वालों ने चार करोड़ खर्चा और दो इंजन लग गए तो पांच हजार करोड़ लग गए। जल्द ही पहाड़ों पर रेल का ये बड़ा काम पूरा हो जाएगा। पांच पांच पीढ़ी के इंतजार का सपनों को पूरा करने के लिए हम लगे हुए हैं। Mr. Modi said due to the development of waterways in the country, the whole Ganga belt including Haridwar is being benefited. He said after coming to power, they started the Namami Gange Abhiyan, the results of which are starting to show for all to see. Targeting the opposition, the Prime Minister said, had the earlier governments worked for the development of Chardham, the portals of tourism and development in Uttarakhand would have opened much earlier and migration would not have been an issue today. He accused the Congress leaders of playing politics of appeasement and said voters of the state will see through the designs of the opposition. He appealed to the voters of Uttarakhand to think about both the past and the future of the state when voting on the 14th of February. In Uttar Pradesh, only 24 hours are left for campaigning for the first phase of elections. Political parties are making all efforts to woo the voters. Our correspondent reports that many senior BJP leaders and star campaigners of the party held door-to-door -door poll campaign and addressed small rallies at different parts of the state. Senior BJP leader and Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh campaigned for party candidates in Buland Shahar and Shah Jahanpur districts, while another BJP leader and Union Minister Smriti Irani campaigned for party candidates in Agra district. 
Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav today addressed public rally in Saharanpur and said that if his party comes into power, he will implement social security schemes for skilled laborers. Meanwhile, West Bengal Chief Minister and TMC Supremo Mamata Banerjee reached Lucknow today evening. SP Chief Akhilesh Yadav received her at the airport. TNC is supporting Samajwadi Party in the assembly elections. Ms. Banerjee will campaign for the Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh. RLD Chief Jan Chaudhary also campaigned in Meerat district today. In Uttar Pradesh, Samajwadi Party announced another list of 24 candidates for assembly election today. Party has pitted Subhavati Shukla, widow of former BJP leader Upendra Dutt Shukla, from Gorakhpur City Assembly seat against CM Yogi Adityanath. Upendra Dutt Shukla had fought by election of Gorakhpur parliamentary seat in 2018, which was vacant after resignation of Yogi Adityanath when he became Chief Minister of the state. In Uttar Pradesh, Congress Party today released names of its 28 candidates for assembly elections. Ten women candidates are included in this list. Ashish Shukla will be party nominee from Amethi. Yogesh Yadav is pitted against Raghuraj Pratap Singh from Kunda seat. The party has replaced candidates on Mankapur and Gora seats. Ms. Santosh Kumari will be party candidate from Manakpur in place of Ms. Kamala Sisodia. Similarly, Ram Pratap Singh will contest from Gora in place of Satyendra Radube. Around 6.17 crore income tax returns, ITRs and about 19 lakh major tax audit reports, TARs, have been filed on the new e-filing portal of the Income Tax Department as on yesterday. Out of 6.17 crore ITRs filed for assessment year 2021-22, 48% of these are ITR 1, 9% is ITR 2, 13% is ITR 3. 27% are ITR 4, ITR 5, ITR 6 and ITR 7. Over 1.73 lakh forms 3CA, 3CD and 15.62 lakh form 3CB, 3CD have been filed in financial year 2021-22. More than 1.61 lakh other tax audit reports form 10B, 29B, 29C, 3CEB, 10CCB, 10BB have been filed till yesterday. The Income Tax Department has been issuing reminders to taxpayers through emails, SMS and Twitter, encouraging taxpayers and chartered accountants not to wait till the last minute and file their TARs or ITRs without further delay. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 170 crore landmark milestone today. Over 170 crore 15 lakh vaccine doses have been administered till now. The recovery rate is currently at 96.19%. Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia today launched the immunization program Intensified Mission Indrathanush 4.0 in New Delhi to protect children and pregnant mothers from severe diseases in the country. It is a special drive to expand full immunization coverage in India. Talking to reporters, Dr. Mandavia said this mission will give impetus to the vaccination coverage. He said as of now the immunization coverage among children has increased to over 76%. Nagaland has launched the intensified mission in Dhanush IMI 4.0 across the districts from today. State Immunization Officer, Health and Family Welfare Department, Nagaland, Dr. Ritu Thur, said IMI 4.0 in the state will be covered in three rounds, that is the 7th of February, the 7th of March and 4th of April. He said each round will be for seven days. Round one of the intensified mission in Dhanush, which started today, will have a total of 200 session sites in 11 districts covering 989 children in the age group of 0 to 2 years and 221 pregnant women. Schools reopened in Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha, Gujarat and Kerala from today in view of the decline in COVID-19 cases. A surge in COVID cases had led to their closure. In Delhi, all school, schools, colleges, educational and coaching institutes reopened from today. In the first phase, classes from 9th to 12th are being resumed in a hybrid mode, both online and offline. And in the second phase, classes from nursery to 8th standard will resume from 14th of February. On the other hand, colleges and higher educational institutes are permitted to resume physical classes completely. The Uttar Pradesh government has decided to reopen schools for classes 9th to 12th. Order issued by the state government said that classes in degree colleges start from today, although strict adherence to the COVID protocol will be a must. In Gujarat as well, schools for classes 1st to 9th standard reopen from today. 
This decision was taken by the state government in a core committee meeting held last week. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Here is a review of proceedings in Parliament today, first from the Lok Sabha. Writer is Achinta Bora of PTI. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today accused the Congress of divisive politics and strengthening separatism. He said the Britishers have gone, but Congress has made the divide and rule policy its character and has become the leader of Tukre Tukre Gang. He said the Congress arrogance has not gone away, despite multiple electoral defeats, and its misdeeds seem to indicate that it has made up its mind not to come to power for the next hundred years. Mr. Modi was replying to the debate on President Ramnath Govind's address to the joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament and the Lok Sabha today. He also accused the Congress of indulging in blind opposition, saying it is also true that criticism is the ornament of a vibrant democracy, but blind opposition is an insult to democracy. Highlighting the development under his government, Prime Minister Modi said, whatever the country has achieved by Sabka Prayas, it would have been good if it would have been accepted and welcomed by the opposition with an open heart. He said, sometimes a thought comes to my mind with their statements, programs and their misdeeds. The way they speak and connect with issues, it seems they have made up mind for not coming back to power for 100 years. Mr. Modi said the Congress has crossed all limits in this time of COVID-19. Slamming the opposition, Mr. Modi rhetorically asked what if his government is talking about being vocal for local, is it not fulfilling the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi? Then why was it being mocked by the opposition, he said. Talking about people of Tamil Nadu hailing deceased first Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat when his body was being carried away after the fatal helicopter crash, Mr. Modi said the Congress has always hated such things and a divisive mindset has gotten into its DNA. He said the Congress is sowing the seeds that will strengthen the roots of separatism. In an apparent reference to Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's speech in the Lok Sabha last week, Mr. Modi said statements were made in Parliament with the intention to incite people. While Mr. Modi did not name Rahul Gandhi in his nearly 100-minute address, he virtually took on all the criticism leveled by the Congress leader in his speech last week. The country has been united and great is so and will remain so, the Prime Minister said. The Congress was winning elections since 1971 on slogan Eradicate Poverty. However, poverty did not end, but people ousted that party, he said. The question is not about elections, it is about intentions. Despite being in power for 50 years, why are the people of the country repeatedly rejecting them? Wherever people have taken the right path, they did not allow the Congress to enter again, he said. The Prime Minister said, the way India handled the pandemic is an example for the world. He said, Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav is the perfect time to think about how India can play a global leadership role in the coming years. Post-COVID-19 pandemic, the world is moving fast towards a new world order and India should not miss this opportunity, he said. The House later passed the motion thanking the President for his address to the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha on January 31st by a voice vote. Earlier, the Prime Minister paid rich tributes to the singing legend Lata Mangeshkar, who passed away yesterday, saying her contribution strengthened the unity of the country. Her voice mesmerized and inspired the country for such a long time, the Prime Minister said, adding that it filled the country with emotions. He said her contribution has strengthened the cultural heritage and unity of the country. And now, review of proceedings in the Rajya Sabha. Writer is Sanjeev Chopra of PTI. The highlight of the Rajya Sabha today was the completion of the debate on the motion of thanks to the President's address, with 40 members participating in it. Resuming the debate, Seema Dvivedi of BJP lauded the government's efforts in spearheading the vaccination process. Anand Sharma of Congress said the President's speech was merely a rosy picture is being shown, but a line is being drawn that the opposition does not want process. Sharma said the contributions of all Prime Ministers should be acknowledged. Former Prime Minister and JDS leader H.D. Deva Gowda said the budget allocation for agriculture and allied sector is disappointing. Prakash Javadikar of BJP said the country has seen new levels of development after the government came to power. He said it is only the BJP government that can construct the Ram Temple. He criticized the opposition who questioned even the existence of Lord Ram in mythology. Rakesh Sinha of BJP alleged that the Congress and the Communist Party of China are in cahoots with each other and cited an agreement signed between the two in 2008. 
वी विजय साई रेड्डी ऑफ वाई एस आर सी पी रेस द इश्यू ऑफ ग्रांट ऑफ स्पेशल कैटेगरी स्टेटस टू आंध्र प्रदेश विनय सहस्रबुद्धे ऑफ बीजेपी सेड प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी हैज अशर्ड एन एम्पावरमेंट गारंटी टू ऑल इंडियंस एंड दैट इज वॉट आर सीन एज अच्छे दिन रामदास अथावले ऑफ आरपीआईए एंड विनॉय बिस्वम ऑफ सीपीआईएम अपोज द मोशन संजय सिन्हा संजय सिंह ऑफ एएपी फौजिया खां ऑफ एनसीपी सीमा द्विवेदी ऑफ बीजेपी सुखराम सिंह यादव ऑफ एसपी अहमद अशफाक करीम ऑफ आरजेडी जयप्रकाश निषाद ऑफ बीजेपी ऑल्सो पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द डिस्कशन होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह मेड अ स्टेटमेंट ऑन द फायरिंग एट एआईएमआईएम प्रेसिडेंट असदुद्दीन ओवेसी इन उत्तर प्रदेश He urged Mr. Ovesi to accept Z category protection offered by the government after a recent attack on his car, saying he still faces security threat. The Home Minister said the Hyderabad MP has refused to take the CRPF protection. He said that Mr. Ovesi had been offered security in the past too, and a government assessment has found that he still faces security threat. He also told the House that the Home Affairs Ministry has received a report from the state government on the attack. The central government has issued directions to provide security to Waisi many times earlier also. Telangana police and Delhi police remained unsuccessful in providing security to Waisi due to his unwillingness for that the minister said. Mr Shah informed the house that the AIMIM leader did not have a scheduled program in Hapur and no prior information was sent regarding his visit to the district control room. The Rajya Sabha was adjourned for an hour today after paying homage to legendary singer Lata Mangeshkar. Chairman M Venkaiya Naidu read out an obituary reference after which the members observed silence as a mark of respect to the memory of the departed. When the house met for the day, Naidu mentioned that the singer passed away on 6th of February at the age of 92. A recipient of many awards including the Bharat Ratna and Dada Saheb Phalke Award, the Nightingale and the Melody Queen recorded over 25,000 songs in 36 Indian languages and a few foreign ones too in her career spanning more than seven decades, he said reading out an obituary reference. Mr. Naidu said Lata ji had a special quality and intricate ability to connect herself with the songs she sang at a deeper level which led to creation of masterpieces that left one and all mesmerized across the globe. An amendment bill to delete the bhukta caste from the list of scheduled castes and include certain communities in the list of scheduled tribes for Jharkhand was introduced in the Rajya Sabha by Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda. That's all in Parliament Review. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav Hallmark ensures purity of gold always purchase hallmarked gold jewelry for any consumer related complaints please contact national consumer helpline toll free number 14404 issued in public interest by department of consumer affairs government of india jago grahak jago Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced today that the country's borders will reopen to fully vaccinated tourists from February the 21st. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is likely to have a partly cloudy sky, shallow fog in the morning with possibility of very light rain. The temperature will vary between 9 and 25 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a mainly clear sky minimum temperature will be 20 degrees maximum expected around 29 Chennai is likely to have fog in the morning and a partly cloudy sky later temperature will vary between 22 and 32 degrees Kolkata will have fog in the morning and mainly clear sky later the city observed minimum temperature of 16 degrees maximum of around 26 and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi replies to debate on motion of thanks in the Lok Sabha asserts India is moving forward as fastest developing economy in the world despite COVID-19 pandemic Prime Minister assures that small farmers interests are being taken care of by government both houses of parliament adjourn for one hour as mark of respect to Nightingale of India Lata Mangeshkar Campaigning reaches climax on its penultimate day for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Samajwadi Party announces another list of 24 candidates for UP assembly elections. Congress Party also releases names of 28 candidates. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia launches immunization program intensified mission Indudhanush 4.0. 
स्कूल रीओपन इन डेली यूपी बिहार ओडिशा गुजरात एंड केरला आफ्टर डिक्लाइन इन कोविड नाइन्टीन केसेज एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया अनाउंसेज टू रीओपन कंट्रीज बॉर्डर्स टू फुल्ली वैक्सीनेटेड टूरिस्ट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट फेब्रवरी एंड विद वी एंड द इवनिंग न्यूज गुड नाइट